Welcome, welcome, one and all, you lovely, lovely, excitable people to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Ladies and gentlemen, there are only 47 shopping days until the election, but they've already started playing Hail to the Chief at CVS. Let us have Halloween first. Since kicking Trump's caboose in the debate, Harris has been surging. Oh, I'm right, I can say surging. She's been surging. Harris has been surging in the polls. But remember, your vote doesn't matter unless you're in a state that swings. I don't know what this, I'm not sure what that means. Politico says there are three states that will ultimately decide the presidential election, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and North Carolina. And Trump desperately needs to win in the Tar Heel state. But Republicans are increasingly worried that he'll be dragged down by MAGA Republican candidate for governor and live action grimace, Mark Robinson. <laughs> Robinson is already trailing in the polls by 11 points because he has a lot of baggage. Like this viral clip from 2020 where he pines for a simpler time. I absolutely want to go back to the America where women couldn't vote. Well. <laughs> you're halfway there, Mark. Women can still vote, but I'm guessing not for you. <laughs> then, how long ago was this? How long was the porn thing? Two weeks? Then, then a couple, two, three weeks ago, it was reported that back in the 90s and 2000s, Robinson would go to a porn shop as often as five nights a week to watch porn videos in a private booth, watching at least two tapes a night. Now, here, look, I don't want to kink shame. We're sex positive here at The Late Show. You do you, which I'm pretty sure is what he was doing in there five <laughs> nights a week. But, <laughs> good for you, buddy. But here's the thing, Robinson is a fundamentalist Christian nationalist who's got a lot of ideas about what you should or should not be able to do in the bedroom, especially you ladies with your dangerous sexy areas. Well, <laughs> today, CNN reported on a series of inflammatory comments Robinson apparently made on a pornography website's message board more than a decade ago, including one in which he referred to himself as a black Nazi. Yes, yes. Meaning Donald Trump might say he's a very fine person, but <laughs> would not rent an apartment to him. <laughs> now, in the Post, that was a federal case, right? That was a federal, they settled. In the Post, Robinson doubled down on his Naziness, writing of the Obama presidency, I'd take Hitler over any of the <laughs> that's in Washington right now. Okay, that is horrible. Also, off topic for a porn message board. Mark, <laughs> come on, stay focused. We're not talking about Hitler right now. We're debating whether that delivery man was fairly compensated for the pizza he delivered with extra sausage. <laughs> if you know <laughs> what uh, oh I mean. I mean, Teresa. But I hear you saying, you're saying, Steve, did Robinson discuss sex at all? In these pornography forums? Thank you for asking. Yes, he did. He graphically described his own sexual arousal as an adult from the memory of secretly peeping on women. That is going to be a tough one for the GOP to defend. Um, when he said he was peeping on women, he just meant tossing bright yellow marshmallow chicks on the ladies. <laughs> Happy East Easter. <laughs> Ooh, speaking of, uh, of guy stuff, any guys here tonight? That's right. One key demo that both Trump and Harris are fighting for is America's young white men. The Brads and the Chads. <laughs> the Tylers and the Kylers. The Bradens, Jadens, Cadens, and Aidens. Well, right now, Trump has an edge with this group. According to an NPR PBS News Marish Go-Go Squeeze Applesauce poll, <laughs> Trump leads Harris among white men without a college degree. Of course, in that demo, both of them are trailing far behind. Big ass tire. You know its slogan, yo, I'm gonna punch it. <laughs> now, to get these precious man votes, the fundraising group White Dudes for Harris rolled out a new $10 million ad campaign. People are excited. Wow. Yeah. I don't blame you. Uh, take a look. Hey, 
White dudes. So, I think we're all pretty sick of hearing how much we suck. Trump and all his MAGA buddies are out there making it worse, shouting nonsense in their stupid red hats and acting like they speak for us when they don't. So I've been doing my own research and decided to check out Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. I do my own research. My name's Tony Pepperoni. Go <laughs> yourself. Okay? You got a problem with that? You want to go, bro? You want to go, bro? I'll go right now, bro. <laughs> The ad goes on, but it's no pressure, my dudes. End of the day, you're your own man. It's your call. But if anyone gives you crap about it, tell them it's none of their damn business. Yeah, it's none of their damn business, because us white dudes, we do what we want. Now let's go get some brewskis and wings and vote for who you want. Go <laughs> yourself. You got a pro... I'll go right... What? Are you talking to Brenda? Now... Were you talking to this clown, Brenda? <laughs> You want to go, Brenda? <laughs> so they got that locked up. Now, with the race coming down uh, right to the wire, yesterday Trump held a rally in the crucial swing state of Long Island, home of, <laughs> home of Tony Pepperoni, and <laughs> vowed to win in deep blue New York. Oh, people love you in New York, sir. In fact, just this summer, Trump won a unanimous vote from 12 of his peers. <laughs> Just to give everybody out there. Hey, hey, hey. Just, just to give you a, a sense of the challenge here, Trump lost New York by 23 points in both 2016 and 2020, but he has a convincing argument for why New Yorkers should pick him. Vote for Donald Trump. What the hell do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? I, uh, I've, compi I've compiled a list. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we got uh, what, uh, what you've got to lose. Democracy, reproductive rights, sanity, the environment, the Department of Education, the ability to look your grandchildren in the eye, <laughs> the ability to wear a red hat ever again. <laughs> Support from our allies and the strategic McNugget Reserve. Uh, uh, of course. Of course, the best way to win over New Yorkers is to make up a bunch of scary lies about their hometown. I used to go to school in the subway. My parents would drop me off at a subway. They would take me to a subway, put me on and say, bye, darling, bye. If you do that today, you have about a 75% chance that you'll never see your child again. But it doesn't always happen. I tried to put Eric on there, but he just, <laughs> he just kept coming home. Uh, he's, he's just coming home. I'd say, go on, and he'd, he'd keep coming back like a boomerang made of gums, coming on back. <laughs> Trump, uh, he kept reminiscing about his youth in New York, which, according to this story, was 100 years ago. I used to be in Brooklyn. I had an office with my father in Brooklyn. And we used to go in Brooklyn to a White Castle. Did anyone ever hear of a White Castle? And my father would say, no, that's the best place. Only 12 cents a hamburger. Remember, 12 cents. 12 cents? <laughs> hold on, hold on. No, no, I'm serious. What the heck, Jack? Y'all kicked me out of the race for talking about old guy stuff, you know. <laughs> Pony soldiers and alley cats, but he gets to stay in, even though he's talking about 12 cent burgers back in my day. Burger cost you a button and a half. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, you know, or... A wink and a smile of his old Daisy May working the grill. Sweet gal, a little fast, you know, take you down to the crick, turn you into a man. Come on, sex. Now, I'm telling you. Now, Jill knows. She's good with it. Here in, uh... Did that. Here in New York, uh, last night, Mayor Eric Adams kicked off the first ever National Urban Rat Summit. For the summit, Mayor Adams welcomed vermin experts from across North America like this. Let's figure out how we unified against what I consider to be public enemy number one, Mickey and his crew. Yes. <laughs> public enemy number one, Mickey Rat. 
and his crew, Donald Goose, Jiminy Cockroach, and... <laughs> Winnie the Donkey. <laughs> Adams painted a, uh, a, a picture at how disturbing these rodent encounters can be. You take uh, the garbage and put it outside, and you see a rat run across your feet. You think about that all day. You will never walk again near that garbage pail without thinking about it. Near a, that garbage pail? What town are you the mayor of? Because <laughs> it sure ain't New York. There's not a single corner of the city where I have not seen a rat close up. Sure, first time it's upsetting, but after living here for a while, I'm walking down the street playing hacky rat. <laughs> There's a tack, tack, tick, tack, tick, tack, tick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, I hack you a little bit. I hack you a little bit. One attendee from Vancouver said the rodents in New York are different than what she's used to, calling them fearless compared to their Canadian counterparts. <laughs> this is true. I believe we have, we have footage of their Canadian counterparts. Oop, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Dave. Oh, you go first. Oh, there I go. No, after you. I'll just scurry by. Let's go to Tim Hortons. <laughs> We've got a great show for you tonight. My guests. Yeah.